What's cracking guys? What's up? Welcome to the Honda Recap. H day was this weekend. I see some footage already out there. Let's get this rolling. What's cracking guys? Welcome back to yet again another episode of the Honda Recap. Thank you all for joining me another week. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up and that bell so you're notified when this airs. We tried it a little earlier. I might try it again a little earlier if this comes out early. What's up guys? If it comes out of its normal time, how are you all doing? Let me know right now in the comments. Leave a comment because I might miss the premiere. Give me that thumbs up. Let me know what you guys think. Earlier time slot, later time slot. Let me know what you guys think if this is your first time basically we go over what's been going on here on the honda here on youtube going over what's been going on week to week and just kind of having a little discussion about honda things in the meantime i wanted to give a quick shout out to our sponsors dem c court for sponsoring the honda recap if you have anything you need from your brain to actually want to make it on a concrete item that you have right now definitely hit them up at dem c corp underscore they can definitely help you out also invictus jp bringing you jdm bronze glass for ef and eg civics but like I said, this weekend was Honda Day, and I'm really excited for all of the content that's going to be coming out right now. I know SP Tuning was out there, Justin from 79th Productions, Frank Downstar was out there, a plethora of other vendors, not to mention all of the guys racing right now in street class. We're talking about Sonic, Omega, there's a K-Swap Tacoma, I think, that was going out there. There's just so many cool cars being built right now, and I think Sonic went 8-7. That's, that's really fast. Just that's straight up really fast all motor. Prop, props to you, dude. But like I said, we have a K-swapped Tacoma out there right now, which is awesome because that plays off what we talked about last week, which is do we want to put K-series engines in not K-series platforms? And a lot of the audience actually thought that that was a good idea. There was two or three of you out there that didn't really want to do that. They wanted to keep it all in the Honda game. And you know what? I respect that as well because you know what? That's our pride, that's our ego. To be honest, that's our ego and our pride and we wanna keep that with us. But it's really awesome to know that these other chassis are being retrofitted to run K-Series engines because they make a lot of power. They're affordable, they're reliable, and they're dependable. And those are all things you actually want in a car. That's why a lot of people LS swap things because they just want them reliable. I'm a big fan of seeing K-Series in cars that aren't meant to have a K-Series in. It's just really cool to see the brains out there making that happen. I'm really excited to see that the people have been keeping that alive out there right now because I have seen K-swapped NSXs. That's really awesome to see. J-swap NSXs, that's another really awesome one to see. We, like I said, as I already mentioned, we got a K-swap Tacoma. We got a lot of K-swapped MR2s coming out right now. Let me know in the comments below. Other people who are basically putting Honda engines and not Honda chassis. I really definitely want to check those out. With that said, I wanted to jump into the next week's topic, and I think this one would be big for a lot of people, so definitely let me know right now what you guys think of how many projects is too many projects. I think one thing that a lot of us actually deal with is having more than one project car, and not a lot of us have that really nice daily and then a car we work on. I think we tend to turn all our cars into a different project me included but i do see a lot of people that start a car they get to about 80 percent, and then they're like okay but i've always really wanted to x and then they jump onto that next thing so then you got a couple cars that are all at a weird level and i'm not knocking it and i'm not hating on it in any way i just noticed that i think that's just a certain nature in a lot of people i just think that that's a certain nature in a lot of us that constantly need to mod things right now so how many projects do you think is just too many projects because from one aspect you can look at a car and you can put in five ten fifteen thousand dollars into a car and then you start picking up a new shell and you start cleaning it and doing all the stuff that you can do for theoretically for free you know without you know paying for simple green or something you're cleaning the engine bay up you feel the fender wells you kind of start cleaning this up you do the brakes now you get wheels as soon as you get wheels you want to lower it and as soon as you lower it you want to drive it so then you start looking at mods and then before you know it you've had this other car that's been sitting there just collecting all your money for years and now you have this other chassis now it's starting to collect more money and more money so i think the project car is one of the biggest challenges that a lot of car enthusiasts actually deal with in the long run because there never seems to be a cap of 
how many project cars you can get. I think the thrill and the happiness you get when you buy another project cars is really a big aspect of wanting to start a new one because it's like a new adventure. Let's go. I got all of these new plans and then that one sits and then you don't know what to do. So you end up with another project car because that just opens up another bag of happiness, right? I think that's a giant rabbit hole that a lot of us seem to fall into. But I do see that there's a common thing between a lot of us that we have multiple cars because we just want to see them live on so you'll buy a shell almost as if it's you know like a stray puppy on the street and you're like i want to do something with that later or someone's going to sell something and you're like well, let me let me take that off your hands bro i don't want to see it go off to somebody who's not going to appreciate it you know what i mean so what do you guys think in the comments below let me know what you guys think how many project cars is too many project cars and can you have enough and with that said how many do you have what are your plans right now i know a lot of you out there probably have one car but you maybe have a separate shell or maybe you have a few or some dreams i really want to talk to you guys in the comments let me know about what you guys have planned have you got some shell do you have some really clutch secret parts just chilling in your room or your garage or something in the back there where you're like i got i got plans for that if you do let me know all right, guys, with that said, I want to get into this week's episode of what's been going on right here. I want to kick this off with Bodie Vision. As he's back, he had a little trip and he came back and he was working on the EG Civic that we've all seen in the back of the garage. And I believe he's actually going five lug right now, which is a really great option for us cars. But it also takes a giant leap because you are now in the five lug game, a whole new set of wheels. You could have a set of wheels on your car right now, jump to five lug, and then you're like, well, I guess... I guess now I gotta find five love wheels and there's a lot of them out there. So the options are really, really out there, but then you have to think about your brakes, you have to think about rotors, you have to think about wheels, you have to think about a whole bunch of other things, especially if you're gonna go from 32 or 36 millimeter axles, you got a lot of things you have to do for one single little upgrade. But props to you, man. I'm really happy to see this car not collecting dust anymore and getting a little bit more love. After that, we got Chris Sadowski working on the first startup of the Turbo Del Sol. This guy is putting a lot of time, effort, and fabrication into making this Del Sol run. And if you watch one of his latest episodes, he finally did get it running. He's got a couple little hiccups he's got to figure out, but that's not going to stop him. He's this far. The turbo is on the car, obviously. It's turning on, it's idling, and I'm pretty sure he's driven it just a little bit, and I'm really excited for you to actually get it out there. I think you're going to run K-Tuner, get it on the dyno, and see what it can actually put down. I know you're not expecting huge, huge numbers, and you're not going for huge numbers, so whatever you get, just make sure it's tuned, make sure it's reliable, and just have fun with it, man. Speaking of going to the dyno, we got Trey b dipping, looking for 600 horsepower out of his Prelude. He's been working on for quite some time. I know he had some problems out there on the dyno. I think he had a precision turbo, started to make a little noise while it's on the dyno. I know he's got to figure that out right now, but I'm really Really excited that you were able to get the whole thing back together in the car and to the dyno that's always a really great feeling to see that happen i'm happy you got there man i'm really interested to see your next move what you're going to do next because i want to see the final numbers on the prelude following that like i said we got honda day footage out there sp tuning with one of the first videos i've seen right now pablo's out there tons and tons of drag racing content you know what he's all about so i'm really excited to see what's been going on there keep uploading videos dude i'm really excited to see day one and day two i know you got some secret lost footage maybe maybe you can put together a cool little b-roll set to give us all a little bit of insight of maybe the car show and the drag strip following that we got weekend bandit with a cool debut of the red bull library for his right hand drive eg civic he has out there in florida i'm really excited because this library definitely definitely suits you man your personality it's just happy but it's loud and the way you like to drive the car you got the no good racing library on there right now i'm stoked for you dude this car is finally finally coming together and with every little thing it's starting to match your personality dude we see it shine through all the videos dude it's just really really happy you're out there to have fun and your car just screams that following that we got solar skate sessions this guy's finally getting his del sol right where he wants it the motor the motor is in the wiring getting set up and in his latest video he's actually working some plumbing for the catch can and a few other things he's got shrouds built for the itbs for the motor right now i'm really excited i know you're going to be driving it in the next couple videos this is a build that i've been waiting for for a very long time i'm really happy that the motor got in the harness turned out amazing and i can't wait for you to drive this again and get it to the track and i'm just beyond excited that you built this car legitimately for the track speaking of the track we've got garage built hondas with the b20b ef hatch out the track yet again and i think by the end of it you heard a little bit of weirdness it didn't sound like it idled as well as it wanted to possibly a rod i don't know but luckily 
you have really awesome friends that were able to help you get your car home. I know you were stranded for a little bit. B20s are cheap. You even said that, and I'm excited that it's probably not going to take you no time to pull that motor, get a new one in, so you know that your track car is always ready to do exactly that, get to the track. Speaking of that, I'm really excited. I know this has been more of a track thing, but refined movement is back. These guys were starting out on their EG. B-Series showed you everything how to do. Pull the motor, harness, get it back in, drive it. They were having a little issues, but they were able to knock that out. They kind of been on a bit of a hiatus for a little bit, but they are back. And I really love that you just, you know what, pulled the car out and you were like, hey, we're back. I got a bunch of content. I'm really excited to share it with you. And I was really excited to see that you guys are really going to start pushing out more content. All right, guys, with that said, I want to talk about a few things that I'm excited for. I know that H Day has been coming up, and I'm always a, a weekend late, but we'll be headed to the East Coast, so hopefully I get to kick it out there with Shades Wade, meet up with a couple of you guys while I'm there, and just see what's up, what's going on. I knew I want to do some traveling, so I'm really excited to see all the H Day content that's coming right now. Obviously, official nice ones. What's up, guys? I know you've been putting out a lot of content, and I know, I know you got a lot of editing coming up your way, so I'm really excited to see what you guys are putting out out there. Jamie Marsh is tuning a lot of cars that are doing extremely fast quarter mile time. Sonic hit, hit eight, seven, and that's insanely fast. So I really wanna see the final numbers for all the cars that I talked about at the beginning and all of the other cars that are out there. It's really, really awesome. I can see through the Instagram stories that Ghost Boy Aki did a live gun cast while he was out there. You know what, man? I really admire your hustle and all the effort that you guys are putting in right there. You were just in the trailer, just doing what you guys do and love at night with all the racers out right now. I admire the hustle, man. So I'm super excited. I'm gonna see if I can try to find that or catch that, or maybe it hasn't uploaded yet. I'm not entirely sure. I know there's a couple podcasts that are out there moving right now. I think the H Day and the Honda community is starting to wrap up. Not too much. It is just becoming the end of the year, so things start to ramp up, but it's going to start getting colder. East Coast is going to start getting colder. Luckily, the West Coast doesn't get exactly too cold, so we get a little bit of longer of a car season, to be honest with you, but track season isn't over. I don't care if you're on the circuit or out there at the strip. You guys are putting down numbers, building your cars, and trying to break records, and I admire the hell out of all of you guys that are keep trying, keep this community alive and keep pushing the barriers as far as they can pull. All right, guys, that's it for this episode of the Honda Recap. I wanted to thank you all for joining me yet again. Thank you for letting me know in the comments below what you think guys think of the time slot. What's up to you, everybody? You and Premier right now. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up and that bell so you're notified every time we air and you never miss one. I want to give a big shout out to at Dempsey Corp underscore on Instagram. Definitely hit them up. If you wanted to create your own product, definitely hit them. They're a lot more than the bringers of the all-wheel drive billet bell housing. Full manufacturing, visionary, and creative design group. You have something in your brain, you want to make it a physical product, definitely hit them up. They can make that happen for you. And Invictus JP bringing you JDM bronze glass for EF and EG Civic coming very, very soon. Definitely be on the lookout for them. Hit them up on Instagram at Invictus JP. Excited for that. I'm really excited to see that hit the market. Head over to hondavlogs.com slash shop. Pick yourself up a shirt, a hoodie, or sticker, or anything else to support the channel. Thank you to everybody who has already. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.